drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos welcome to edupedia world grade 10 computer science video lecture series Rupeka Vandibona and from this episode we are going to build up a practical application called palindrome from the things that we have learned so far. Okay, it's enough about theories. Let's try a little puzzle called palindrome. A palindrome is a word that is spelled the same from both the ends. For example, the word Anna. From the forward, from the backward, it got the same letters. A, N, N, A. So likewise, if we take the word Malayalam, from the forward, we have the letters M, A, L, A, Y, A, L, A, M. And from the backward, we got the same letter format. M, A, L, A, Y, A, L, A, M. So these words are called palindromes. There are two basic ways of determining whether a word is a palindrome. The method one is make a copy of the letters in reverse order and compare that copy to the original. The second approach is see if the first letter is the same as the last, then see if the second letter is the same as the second to last and keep going until you reach the middle. So here we'll take the second approach. There are many ways of expressing this idea in code depending on how we represent the word and how we keep track of how far we have come with the comparison of characters. So in this episode, we'll write a little program that tests whether words are palindromes in a few different ways just to see how different language features affect the way the code looks and works. There are two techniques that we can use to solve this puzzle to write the program for this requirement. The first technique is using string operations and the second technique is using arrays. So we first look at using string operations. Now before start coding I'll show you the design of our program. It is important to have a design before start coding. So this is what we are going to do. We have to have two variables. The variable first get hold of the index positions from the front and the variable last get hold of the index positions from the back. Therefore, the initial value of the variable first should be 0 to represent the 0th index position and the initial value of the variable last should be the last index position. That means the length of the string minus 1. Now we need to compare the two characters represented by the index positions of first and the index position of last. If it is match, that means our first step is OK. Because in the palindrome words, the characters represent from each of the ends should be same. So this is the first step. In the next step, we need to increment the variable first and decrement the variable last. And again, we need to match the characters represented by the index positions of the variables. We have to repeat this process until these two variables comes into the middle point or else when the match get fails. Now this middle point. If you look at the light blue colored example, the length of that string is an even number. Therefore, the middle point would be something between index positions 2 and 3. If you look at the dark blue colored example, the length of that string is an odd number. Therefore, the middle point would be the index position 2. Actually, there is no point of matching the index position 2 against 2. Therefore, we will stop repeating the process when the first variable get hold of the value of 1 in there and when the variable last get hold of the value 3 in there. So likewise, in the light blue colored example, the repeating process would be stop when the variable first get hold of the value 2 and the variable last get hold of the value 3. So this means the value of the variable first cannot get hold of a value which is greater than or equal to the value of variable last. So this should be our termination condition of the looping. In other words, 
the value of the variable first should always be lesser than the value of the variable last that should be our satisfaction condition of the looping okay now i'll summarize what we need to do we have to have two variables variable first and the variable last the variable first get hold of the zeroth index position and the variable last get hold of the last index position and then we need to have a loop inside the loop we have to increment the variable first and we have to decrement the variable last meanwhile we need to match against the characters which are represented by the index positions of the variable first and the variable last if they are match we can continue the loop if they are not match we have to terminate the loop and says this word is not a palindrome if this is match we will continue the loop until the variable first and the variable last comes into the middle point when they comes into the middle point we can say this word is a palindrome now i hope you understand the design of our program therefore let's start coding this is my NetBeans IDE. I already have created a project. Therefore, now I'm going to create a new C++ source file. I'll name it new file and click finish. And this is my new source file. Now I'm going to import two libraries. The first one is iostream and the second one is the library string because we need to use string operations inside this program especially the length operation. The length method in the string library returns the number of characters in the string not including any null terminations. Remember in our previous episode we learned about the termination value 0 in the strings. So here the length method does not count that. Now I am going to mention we are using the namespace std. Ok, now this is our main method, the starting point of our program. And then the most important method, the method we use to check whether a word is a palindrome. So for that I am going to use the return type as bool. So this method will return saying whether a word is a palindrome or not. The name of this method is isPalindrome. And it takes a string type argument. So we can pass the word we need to check for the palindrome. And then we write our two variables first and last. The initial value of the variable first is 0, it's an int type variable. And for the variable last, that's the place where we call the length method. So to call the length method, we write the name of the variable s dot and calling of the method length. So it will return the length of the string that we have passed and then minus 1. So the variable last now represent the last index position. And now it's time for the looping. So for that we use a while loop and as the condition we use the satisfaction condition. The value of the variable first should always lesser than the value of the variable last. Now inside the while loop we'll write the matching process. So for that we use a if statement and as the condition we use the termination condition which says the letters are not matched. So if it is not match, we are going to terminate this loop. Now in here, even though the argument is not an array, we can use the square brackets to obtain the characters in each index position of the string. So in here, the value of the variable first is 0. S Inside the square bracket 0 will give you the character in the 0th index position. Not equal and again the character in the last index position. So this is our if statements condition. If the characters are not matched we will return false. And after that we will increment the variable first and decrement the variable last inside the while loop. So that's what's happening inside the while loop. If the while loop executed OK, then that means each character is unmatched. Therefore, we can end up this program by returning true. So that's what's happening inside the is palindrome method. Now let's call this method inside the main method. But before that, we have to do one thing. 
we have to declare this is palindrome method within this scope to call this method so I'm going to declare the method in here and now we are ready to call this method with the cout so cout and we call this method is palindrome and as the argument we pass the word Anna it's a palindrome word which means after execution of this program the console should output the value 1 which represent the boolean true so here we executed the program and let's see whether our program is correct yes we got the value 1 at the console which says our program is correct for the palindrome words now let's try with a word which is not a palindrome like the word hello and to make the output more perfect I'm going to use the slash n with this c out okay now let's execute the program if our program is correct we have to obtain the value 0 yes we got the value 0 which means our program is work as expected good now that's all about passing the argument as a string now we are moving into the second technique using the array operations the logic is mostly the same as previous and the program is mostly the same code but here we have to change three things in the code here we need to import the library string.h and this time we are not passing a string we are passing a char type array and to obtain the length of the array we are calling the method strlen as the argument we are passing the character array so with strlen minus 1 we can get the last index position so by changing these three code lines in our program we can obtain a perfect program for our requirement and with that we are going to end up this episode from this episode we have built up a small practical application from the things that we have learned so far it uses arrays it uses string operations calculating the length of the strings and many more from the next episode we are learning about comments and we learn how to use comments for document the program and that would be the last lecture in this course grade 10 computer science so thank you for watching and stay tuned on with edupedia world Thank you.